I was born in Holland and I grew up in, uh, in Israel and I grew up in West Africa. My father was of, involved in engineering and we, we lived in the Ivory Coast and in Nigeria. And then uh, we moved to Milwaukee from Nigeria. It was the coldest winter in recorded Wisconsin history. So it was an incredible move to, to, to arrive in Milwaukee. Uh, and, um, uh, and then I, uh, after high school in Milwaukee, I, I went to school in Indiana University and then to Cornell and, I, and then moved to New York. Well, my, my grandmother, my, my grandmother on my mother's side was a very serious amateur musician in Holland and uh, really instilled a love of, of classical music in me from an early age. Living in Africa, um, I had teachers and nannies and, and just community members around um, who were teaching me traditional African dances. That's something that's really stayed with me, those rhythms and sounds all these years. And uh, when I moved to America, I really became interested in, in rap music, especially. And I can remember my grandmother, when I visited her in Holland, after living in America for a few years, she took me to buy my first Walkman and told me I could buy any, choose any tape I wanted, and I chose Run DMC's um, Tougher Than Leather. She didn't speak to me for a week after that, uh, but I think I made the right buy. I think that having a rather confusing path to living in America, of being born in Holland and living in Africa and then growing up here in America, and um, and just trying to understand what what home is, what place is, is nationalism a part of my music? Should should I should I be writing Israeli music? Should I be writing Dutch music? Should I be writing American music? Um, does that play a part in who I am as a composer? Those are important things for me to to understand, and I hope that it, uh, that all of those pieces of my puzzle uh, contribute to a, a richer tapestry in my music. I started writing music when I was about 10. I had already been uh, playing the trumpet and the piano, and I, I just felt that I had something that I needed to say to get off my chest. I had been listening to um, this cassette that had the Rite of Spring on one side, and Britain's um, uh, Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra on the other, and I listened to them incessantly over and over again. And I really thought at age 10 that I, I had something, something to say. And uh, of course, over since then, it's been a process of, of humility as I learned uh, more and more. But uh, I think that a composer needs a certain ego, especially at the beginning that feeling that you really have something worth saying. That was really important to me. I, I wanted to be a composer, I think, after hearing The Rite of Spring. I really thought I could do better. <laughs> I think since then it's been really about learning where I stand in the universe. <laughs> Uh, absolutely remember growing up from a, already at age six or seven. My parents had a, a big LP collection and I listened to the Quartetto Italiano a lot. They, we, my parents had a recording of the Schubert string quartets with Quartetto Italiano, which made a huge impact on me. Um, and the C minor quartet especially has stayed with me in my psyche. I think every time I write for strings, uh, there's a special place for Schubert. 
I distinctly hear, remember the first time I heard Kronos Quartet. I was in high school. Um, I had an art teacher in high school who was actually more interested in contemporary music than the, uh, than the band or orchestra teachers. Sorry <laughs> if you hear this. But this art teacher had, had a collection of contemporary uh, classical music cassettes, CDs, LPs, and would share them with me and uh, turn me on to the Kronos Quartet. And uh, I really remember this feeling like I didn't even know it was really an option to be uh, a contemporary composer and until I heard the Kronos Quartet play music. Um, it was the, um, what album was that? Night Prayers with Gia Concelli and some other beautiful pieces. I just fell in love with that. Well, I'm very grateful that Cronus chose me. It's, it's a huge honor um, to work with a string quartet that has championed the music of so many composers and so many composers that I, I totally worship and adore. Um, I, I uh, have been researching and writing cycle of pieces based on the music of the, of the Jewish musical community of Italy and Rome in particular for, for more than 10 years now. And uh, the cycle is based on um, these old reel-to-reel -reel recordings that I found when I was in Rome as part of the Rome Prize in 2007. And those recordings were recorded by Leo Levi. He's the sort of Alan Lomax of Italy. He recorded them in the 1940s and 50s, went around Italy recording uh, communities that were really in peril of kind of extinction. And the, the old Jewish community of Rome is one community that, uh, um, at least until the turn of the century, was very distinct in its in its voice in its musical voice. The the Roman rite, as they call it, is very distinct from the Sephardic rite or the Ashkenazi rite, and that 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 Roman Jewish sound is absolutely unique. So these old recordings made in the 40s and 50s of men singing who are already in their 70s and 80s when they're re being recorded in the 40s and 50s, meaning they had learned this music in the 19th century before things started to get all mixed up in Roman Jewish culture. Now, when you go to Rome and you ask, what does the Roman rite sound like? It's, nobody really has any clear idea anymore because it's just become, become so integrated. So in a sense, integration is a wonderful thing, but for, for, for this particular music, now we're starting to lose that sense of what is the Roman rite, what is the Sephardic rite. And so these old reel-to-reel -reel recordings were so beautiful and important to me. And I've written now five or six pieces based on those recordings made by Leo Levy. So um, perhaps, perhaps the Kronos Quartet um, heard that sound and wanted me to continue in that, in that vein. Uh, when I write for quartet, and I've written a few pieces for string quartet already, I, I really, um, I often think about um, the idea of the meta instrument, making the quartet one, one instrument rather than focusing on individual voices. I love the idea of creating a new color by the combination of all four of these voices into some larger larger beast. Um, I think that in the piece that I wrote uh, for Kronos, I, there are some, some moments for each instrument to shine where we hear the voice of each particular instrument. But in a sense, really, I do think about how do we make these four instruments work as one. Every piece to me feels a little bit like uh, uh, there's a little element of I, I don't know how to compose. There's a blank slate and I need to find that, that new way through it and to come up with a new approach and 
So there's always a great effort involved with every, every piece. I don't feel like I'm relying on some, some trove or technique that I've used before. Perhaps every piece um, adds to some subconscious thing that happens, but I, I don't know anything about that. And, and it's an effort. It's definitely an effort to write a piece of music. Um, but I, I think that uh, in this particular case, I knew I wanted to write something for Kronos uh, based on this, this uh, treasure trove of, of Roman and Italian uh, Jewish melodies that I've been working with. I knew from the get-go that that's what I wanted to do. Well, uh, when I was living in New York, uh, I had the fortune of being the artistic director of MATA. MATA is uh, an organization founded by Lisa Bialava and Eleanor Sandresky and Philip Glass in the early 90s um, to promote uh, the work of young composers. In fact, uh, uh, before I worked from them, when I just moved to New York, Mata really helped launch my own career. So I thought I could give back by, by working for Mata. And um, I spent years working with that organization, um, putting on festivals, commissioning works, bringing ensembles from all over the world, and um, promoting the music of, of young composers uh, I, I think that, um, that w we composers have to not live in an in a, in a artistic bubble only focusing on our own work. I think uh, just, just on, a, on a very basic level, just focusing only on yourself is not good for your health. So, so as, as artists, if we, if we make it a par part of our, our practice, our creative practice to help other people, it actually um, goes back and, and aids our own creative work. Uh, when you play my piece, uh, listen closely to one another and uh, play from your heart. And you asked me to say that in Hebrew. Aiti yomer lemishe menagen et ha-yetzira sheli lakshiv וזה לזה, ולנגן מהלב.